Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Math with Dr. War. Today's lesson, we're going to look at box and whisker plots. A box and whisker plot displays your data along a number line using medians. And we all can find the median, which is the middle value. Now with box and whisker plots, we always talk about in mathematics the five number summary. That is your minimum, your Q1, your median, which is sometimes called your Q2, Q3, and your maximum values. Up here, this is an example of a box and whisker plot. So here, our least value is what we call our minimum. Now, the line from the minimum to the Q1, which is our first quartile, is called a whisker. The Q1, your first quartile, is the median of the lower half of your data set. Here's our median, which we call Q2, the second quartile. And that's basically dividing your data in half. So we're finding the median of the entire data set. Over here, we have Q3, which is your third quartile. That is where we find the median for the upper half of your data. And right here, the greatest value is your maximum value. Now I'm going to show you how to construct a box and whisker plot. But remember, on your task test, they won't ask you to actually construct it. You would have to identify it given four box and whisker plots. But I'm going to show you how to construct. Here I have some data and it says use the following data to make a box and whisker plot. Your first step to put our data in order from smallest to largest. So here I have my data in order from smallest to largest. Now our first step is we're going to find our minimum value. So 12 is our minimum value and our maximum value is going to be at 26. Next, we're going to find our median because remember the median is what cuts your data in half. So here I have an odd data set with 11 points, which means my sixth value would be my median value. So let's find that. So right here, that 19 is my median, which would be my Q2. Now we have to find the median for the lower half, which is right here. And then we have to find the median for the upper half. So right here, again, this has five data points. So the median would be the middle value, which would be 14. So that 14 is our Q1. From 19 to 26, the median value would be 24. So that would be our Q3. So we have our minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3, and maximum value. And they're gonna give you a number line. So here in this number line, we're just going to start from 12. So this is 12. I'm just gonna put in the important numbers. So 12, 14 is important, 19 is important. Okay, this is 26, and this is 24. So I'm actually gonna draw it on my number line because I'm not too good with graphing stuff. Minimum value is 12. Our Q1 is 14, right here. Our median is 19, right here. Our Q3 is 24, right here. And our maximum is 26, right here. And I'm gonna make this line go a little bit down like that. Okay, let's make the box. Here's our box and then let's just draw our whisker there's our whisker and there's our whisker that's our box plot so here this was an odd data set so this was pretty simple let's try it with an even data set and to save some time i already have it in order from smallest to largest we have our minimum value which is 13 and our maximum value which is 45 now, because it's even, there are eight of them. The middle value would be your fourth and fifth value. So let's find that, which will be these two right here. So we're going to add these two values and divide by two. So our middle value will be 26.5. Our median is in the middle right here. So I'm gonna do like this little squiggly line right here. 
um, I'm gonna write up here that we added 25 with 28 and divided by two. Our median, which is 26.5, is right in the middle here, which means this is my lower half from 13 to 25, and 28 to 45 is my upper portion. So from here, I'm gonna have to find the median which means I'm going to have to add 15 and 19 because those are in the middle and divide those by two. So that would be 17. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add 31 and 42 and divide it by two. And that gives me a value of 36.5. So this is my minimum. This is Q1. This is Q2, the median. This is Q3. And that's our maximum. We use our number line, so let's... Okay, so our minimum value is at 13. So we're going to assume that that's somewhere here. Our Q1 is at 17, so I'm gonna assume that's my line right here. Our Q2 is 26.5, so I'm gonna assume that is right here. Our Q3 is at 36.5. I'm gonna assume that is right here. And 45 is our maximum value, so that's my dot. Okay, let's make our box, put in our whiskers. That is our box and whisker plot. Now on the task test, thank goodness we don't actually have to draw the box and whisker plot. We'll have to identify it. So they'll give you the data and then they'll ask you, from four choices, which one represents the correct box and whisker plot? And they may also ask you to interpret your box and whisker plot, such as finding um, Q1, Q2, the median. Please remember Q2 is the median, Q3, minimum value, maximum value, and also the range. And remember, we did the range where we did mean, medium, and mode. Range is basically when you have to subtract the largest value from the smallest value. So let's take a look at some questions you may see on your task test. So my first question gives us data set represents the number of hours spent on the internet in a week by students in a mathematics class. Which box and whisker plot represents the data? Let's go for the easiest of the five number summary. So we know what's the minimum and we know what's the maximum. So five and 19, but one starts at two, so we can eliminate this is five, it's between four and six, 19. Okay, so our answer is either two, three, or four. Now remember, after you have identified the minimum and the maximum, next we go for, so we go, let me write it here, min, then we go max, then I go for the median, because that's the easiest thing, next. So let's find the median of our data set. Our data set has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it has 15 points, so it's odd. So we're looking for the eighth value. So let's find out who's number eight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the 10 would be our median. Okay, let's see who has the bar at 10. Very good, so our answer is number two. So we didn't even have to find Q1 or Q3. Remember your test is time, and you're not constructing from scratch. It's already constructed for you. You just have to pick the correct answer. And you just needed the minimum, the maximum, and the median to find your answer. They could also ask you just simple questions. In this one, it says in the box and whisker plot below, what is the second quartile? So we know here this is your minimum value. This is your Q1. This is your Q2, which is your median. This is Q3, and this is your max. So we want the second quartile. Your second quartile is your Q2, which is your median, and that is at 30, and that's your answer. As long as you know your five number summary, you should be okay. This question is asking, what is the range? Remember, the range is you're gonna take your greatest value and subtract your smallest value. Eight minus one is seven. That's your range. Again, these questions are not that difficult. 
The accompanying diagram shows a box and whisker plot of students' test scores on last year's Mathematics A midterm examination. Now they're asking for the median score. Remember the median score is your Q2. Q1, Q2. That is at 80 something. Let's look to see 80 something, 81. That's your answer. The next question, based on the box and whisker plot below, which statement is false? The median is seven. That is true. The range is 12. Now we have to calculate the range. So the range, we need to take the largest value, which is 12, and subtract it from the smallest, which is two. Our range is 10, which means our answer number two, that is false. The box and whisker plot below represents the results of test scores in a math class. They wanna know what the 65, the 85, and the 100 represents. So I'm gonna start with the 100. The 100 is your maximum value. So we can eliminate the first one. The 85, which is right here, that is your Q3, right here. And then the 65, which is right here, is your Q1. So the 65 is Q1, the 85 is Q3, and the 100 is the maximum. Which statistic cannot be determined from a box plot representing the scores of math tests in Mr. D. Ryder's algebra class? We can find the lowest score. We can find the median score. We can also find the highest score. However, from a box plot, you cannot find the score that occurs the most, and we know that means the mode. The box and whisker plot below represent the math test scores of 20 students. And this one is interesting. They want to know what percentage of the test score are less than 72. Now remember a box plot is made up of quartiles and I told you the quartiles divide your data into four equal parts. So to go from the minimum to Q1, that's actually 25%. From Q1 to the median is 25%. From the median to Q3 is 25%. And from Q3 to the maximum is 25%. So when they ask what percentage of the test scores are less than 72, meaning from here to here, that represents 25% of the test scores. Suppose they reworded this and says, what percentage of the test scores are greater than 72%. So here's 72 and greater would be all the way less than the 100. So that would be 25 plus 25 is 50 plus 25 would be 75%. I think this question will help explain it a little bit better. The box and whisker plot below represents a set of grades in a college statistics class. And they wanna know which interval contains exactly 50% of the grades. So let's look at the first interval, 63 to 88. So 63, which is the minimum, and we're going to 88, which is right here. That would be your Q3. That would be 25 plus 25 plus 25. So from 63 to 88, that is actually 75%. So that's not our answer. Okay, we're going from 63 to 95. That is from here all the way to the maximum, which means that's 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25, which would be a 100%, because that's the entire data set. 75 to 81, okay, 75, is right here and we're going to 81 which is right here so from here to here that is only 25 percent of the grades so fortunately for us our answer is four so they want from 75 to 88 so from 75 which is right here all the way to 88 which is right here 25 plus 25, that would be 50% of the scores. I hope this little mini lesson 
has been helpful on bots and whisker plots, they are not that difficult. And thank God you don't have to actually construct it. Good luck on your task examination when testing resumes. And remember, most importantly, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Have a great day.